He's excited to talk about the Rails router. Yeah! <laughs> so, um, I've actually been working in uh, Angular 2 a lot lately, so I don't get a lot of chance to work in Rails. But Ryder and I work on our uh, final project that we did for the Iron Yard still, most weekends. So that's a fun time. And the other day we were modifying one of the routes in our routes file, and I was like, how does this actually work? Like, really? How it do that? And so I kind of spent a few days looking into that, and it turns out that is a much deeper question than I ever anticipated. And I learned a lot, so now I want to share what I've learned with you guys. So let's get started. So the first thing we should do before we talk about how it do is maybe what it do, because I know a lot of you have not actually touched a Rails app yet. So it would probably be helpful to know what I'm even talking about. So in your Rails app, um, there's a thing called the router. You have a routes.rb file, and basically what that is is a collection of all of the routes that are defined for your app. So when somebody's on the internet and they make a request to your website, that URL that comes in, you know, myapp.com slash users. So whatever it comes in needs to be mapped to one of my existing routes, so then my app knows what to do with it. Does that kind of make sense? Cool. So let's take a look at pretty much the simplest route that you could have. So it says git slash users to users index. So what this is saying is, hey router, if you get a git request and the path for that URL is slash users, then I want you to call the, that doesn't work to shine on a screen. I do have a laser though. <laughs> um, then call the index method on your users control. So it's basically, if the route matches this particular string, then call this action on this controller. So let's think for a minute, like if we wanted to kind of make our own router, what is the simplest way you can think of to see if a string matches a particular pattern? <laughs> I did write a blog post of all this, so uh, yeah, you can read that too. So writer, if you wanted to make a router and you wanted to <laughs> match a string, what would be the best way to do that? Yeah, pair programming. <laughs> pair programming. A regular expression, maybe? We could do a match with a regular expression? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we could totally do that. So this is basic if block. Um, so if our URL path matched the regular expression that matches slash users, then we would call the users index. Otherwise, if this is our only route, then we didn't find any route that matches, and we would do a 404 not found, right? Make sense? So that's cool, but what if we had two routes? So now we have a user's index route, and then we have slash users slash ID means I want one single user, right? So I have two routes, two different controller actions that I could call, and all of a sudden, even with just two routes, it's already getting not nearly as simple. We've got two regular expressions now, um, three different conditions in my if block, and it's fair to say that you will never have a Rails app this simple either. You could have 50, 100, maybe even 1,000 routes eventually. Um, I don't know. You can have a lot. The point is, it would make a ginormous, ugly if block to do it this way. But what if you could make your own regular expression engine that was specifically designed to only parse URLs and collect useful information about those URLs as it did it. That would be pretty cool. And it turns out that's exactly what the journey module in the Rails router does. <laughs> so the journey module <laughs> was written by Aaron Patterson, who if you've been in the Ruby community at all, you probably are aware of him. He's also known as Tenderlove. Um, he's a Ruby core contributor, also did a lot of work on Rails. Um, so he wrote this. It was added originally in Rails 3.2, officially merged with Rails 4.0, and it's been the routing solution ever since. So it's an open source module, right? We could just go read the README and uh, see how it works, right? Well, it turns out the README is not so great. 
this is what it says. <laughs> well, that's cool. There's probably a synopsis portion too, right? Well, there is. And it says, too complex right now, frowny face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, it's not a lie. It's pretty complex. And even in the time we have here, this is going to be an extremely high-level overview because we have to start all the way back on how to read. <laughs> so if we're trying to teach a computer how to read URLs, we should probably think about, well, how do you read anything? So take the simple sentence, my cat eats the food. So you probably don't really think about it when you read it at this point, because I at least hope that you've been reading for a while in your career. Um, but think about like a little kid reading. What do they do when they read a sentence? Right, sound out every word. So, and that's pretty much how we're going to do that. So first, you get, what's the first word? My, which is what type of word? Adjective. Technically a possessive adjective, yes. So, but yes, it's an adjective, and it's the string my. Next up, we have cat, which is what? A noun. And then we've got eats, which is? Verb. You guys are so good at this. And then we got another adjective, the, uh, and food, which is also a noun, right? So this process of breaking things up, generally, is called tokenizing. And so this is the same way pretty much any computer language works. The first thing it does is take whatever you input and break it up into the smallest meaningful pieces that it can. Journey does pretty much the same thing. And you can see that it uses uh, Ruby's built-in string scanner class uh, to do that. You can open Rails console and type these things and it will actually do it for you. So first make an instance of the Journey scanner. Call the scan setup method on it and just give it any uh, URL, so like slash users, slash ID. And then you can call next token on it. And it will first give you the slash token. Call it again, and it will give you the literal token users. Then it will give you another slash, and finally a symbol of ID. <clears throat> so. Honestly, there's not too many tokens you have to know to be able to parse a URL. This is a list of all of them. So slash, a literal, which just means a literal string, uh, symbol, left parentheses, right parentheses, a dot, an or, or a star. So now we've got it broken up into individual tokens, but those words don't mean a lot in isolation, right? We need the meaning of the sentence as a whole. So the next thing to do is to start grouping words into meaningful units using grammar rules, right? And this is also known as parsing. So you're about to get a flashback to elementary school. So if we take the sentence that we had originally and we start parsing it, we take all the individual tokens. My is an adjective, but it's not just an adjective in isolation. It describes cat, so together those two things make a noun phrase. And then you've got eats, which is a verb, obviously. And what's the object of eats? The food. So again, you have an adjective describing a noun, makes a noun phrase. Eats, together with the object of that, makes a verb phrase. And then to make any sentence, you need both a subject and a verb, right? So a noun phrase and a verb phrase. And those two combine into a sentence, right? So if we were to describe how we did that grouping using code-like things, you might describe it like this. So I've made a class here, which I call Kitty Sentence Parser. The next thing in that class is a list of all the tokens that we'll need to describe this. So we've already seen all the tokens. We just have nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And then I'll use the rule keyword to start listing all the rules that I have. So the first rule, <clears throat> the top level rule, we have a sentence, right? And then the colon starts the rule. We know that a sentence is a noun phrase plus a verb phrase. So anytime we run across those combination, that means we have a sentence. Uh, then we have the noun phrase rule, which 
Remember, the first noun phrase we had was my cat, so that's an adjective plus a noun. It could also just be cat. I mean, that would still be a valid sentence, right? But I also have an or, so it can be either an adjective or a noun, or a noun. Uh, and then I have my verb phrase, which is the verb plus the object of that verb, so verb plus noun phrase, right? And you'll also notice I have these blocks. So when I match a particular rule, then I can do whatever I want in the block. In this case, I'm making new objects. So if I've matched a sentence rule, make me a new sentence object. Um, the value object is what you get from the items that you're matching on. So like val0 here would be the noun phrase, val1 would be the verb phrase. And I can make a new object using those. Make sense so far? Sweet. So as you may have guessed, these are actually not imaginary syntax. This is actually syntax for Rack. It is a built-in parser generator for uh, Ruby. It's a derivative of Yak, Y-A-C-C, which is yet another compiler compiler. <laughs> They're really good with uh, abbreviations. We're about to get into another really good abbreviation. Rack is a Lawler parser, which as we all know, stands for look ahead, left reversed, rightmost derivation. And that is totally not the right number of words for that <laughs> acronym. <laughs> but basically, <laughs> basically what that means in layman's terms is our parser is just going to read tokens left to right and try to match our grammar rules as we go. And if I can't match a rule, then I'm going to look ahead at the next token to see if I can then match a rule. So let's see how that works to parse our sentence. So your parser basically has the grammar stack, which is currently evaluation, evaluating, and then it has the rest of the tokens. So the first token it shifts over into the grammar stack is the word my, because it's the first word in our sentence, which was an adjective. Do I have any rules that match just an adjective by itself? I do not, meaning I need the next token to figure out what to do. So now I've got my cat, so I've got adjective noun. Do I have a, ver or a, a rule for that? I do, so I make a uh, noun phrase, right? So we match this rule. I also make a noun phrase object, and I convert that to this is now a noun phrase. So that's what's known as a reduce. So I'm taking the tokens and reducing them using a rule. Go ahead and get the next token. Do I have a noun phrase verb? I don't. So I grab the next one. Do I have verb and adjective or noun phrase verb adjective? I don't have that either. So I'm going to take the last token. And now I have noun phrase verb adjective noun. I do have adjective noun, so I do one reduce. So I reduce adjective noun to a noun phrase, and so I have noun phrase verb, noun phrase. I also now match verb, noun phrase, so I can reduce again to noun phrase, verb phrase, and that matches my top level sentence rule, so it all reduces to a sentence. So that is how we got this tree-like structure. And actually, it is a tree, it's a syntax tree. So it's pretty common stuff in uh, computer science, uh, and you see them all over the place. So Journey basically does the same thing. Uh, so again, you can go into your Rails console in any app, make an instance of the Journey parser. You can call the parse method on the parser and pass it a URL, and it'll make a tree for you. You can write that to a dot file. And then you do need uh, the gem graphviz to do this, but you can actually then exit the console, do this conversion on it, and then you get to see OMG, a tree. <laughs> so you can basically see uh, our we had slash users slash ID and then the optional dot format. And it basically just uh, turns into this right weighted tree. Uh, if you want, we don't really have time to do it right now, but you can go into the journey source code and uh, and see the rules. They're actually not that complex. They don't have to be that complex for a URL. So you could make a tree, go look at the rules, and see if you can figure out how uh, the parser was able to get that, what rules it matched. 
Uh, I would recommend, if you are going to try that, start at the bottom and go up. That's definitely the easiest way to do it. So imagine for a minute, so now we've tokenized, we've taken those tokens, parsed them into a tree. What if we could then make a map out of our tree? So imagine if all these nodes in our tree were imaginary cities, and the roads between the nodes, that's funny, I've never said that out loud before, <laughs> <laughs> and the road names were just our token names. That would be pretty cool. Maybe a map would look something like this. So we've got seven cities, starting at city zero. It's a pretty simple map. There's only one road between each one. Um, but our first road name is slash. And then you can kind of see, yeah, the road names are a little weird, but that's all right. We'll get to what they mean in a minute. Also, you'll notice that city four and city six have a double circle. They're way cooler than the other cities, so that is probably where we want to end up, is one of those cities. It's probably a sweet moat or something around it. <laughs> so, since we're in imagination land, let's imagine that we also have a tiny little robot waiting at city zero, and he has no idea what to do, he has no instructions. I know, he's so sad. So we give him instructions in the form of a URL path. And the robot's job is to start reading that URL path one token at a time and see where it takes him. So the first token he gets is a slash. And he's here in city zero and he says, oh, look, this road name is slash. I could totally take that road. So he makes it to city one. Next he gets the literal users. Oh, I got a road for that too. Make it to city two. Another slash, take the short hop over to city three. Now he gets 22, and you might notice that is not actually 22. Does anybody know what that is in regular expression? <laughs> Basically just anything that's not a dot, slash, or a question mark. So to a robot, it makes sense that 22 means not dot, slash, or question mark. So he ends up in city four. It's one of the cool cities. He calls it a job well done. So as you may have guessed, this map also is not imaginary. This is what is known as a generalized transition graph, or GTG. Uh, there are five characteristics that characterize what a generalized transition graph is. Number one, a finite set of states, which are the cities in our example. A finite set of input characters, uh, in our case, we only have the characters that a URL would be, so that's definitely finite. A non-empty set of start states, uh, so that would be our city zero would be our start state. A set of final or accepting states, so those are our two cool cities. And a finite set of transitions where the edges, which are our roads, are regular expressions. And just like all our other previous examples, you can make your own GTG. You go into Rails console, first make your parser, make yourself a tree, and then you can call the GTG builder.new and give it your tree as a parameter, and then call the transition table method on it. Write it to a file, convert it to a PNG, and that is how you get our. Oh, look, my touch bar lets me go back multiple slides. That's how you get that picture. Fancy. So. <laughs> We're all learning together. Yes. And as you also might have guessed, our little robot is actually a thing too. It's called a deterministic finite automaton. Uh, basically, it just consumes input one chunk at a time. Uh, it transitions states depending on what input is received, so when he drives from city to city. If it's in an accepting state, when he runs out of tokens, then he's like, cool, I accept my fate. <laughs> if he's in a non-accepting state or receives input that just doesn't match anything he can do, he rejects it, fail. So that's cool, so now we've seen how you can take a URL, parse it into a tree, make that tree into a map, and have a little robot figure out if it's a valid URL or not. 
But we're really not any better off if we have to do that for every single route, because remember that was our whole problem in the beginning. We're getting a giant if block with different branches for everything. So what if we could mash more than one map together? So you can totally do that. So you can do the same thing. You make a parser, but this time make two trees. So I've got it for the user's index route and the user show route. Write that all to a file, and you get this. So now I've still got one GTG, but now I have four different accept states for all the different valid URLs you can get from those combinations. So this was our user's show route, or user's index route. So user's index, the shortest one I can have is just slash users. That's my state two here. If I have the optional format, so like .json, .html, that gets me down here, the dot gets me to here, the, the final um, literal gets me over to here, or symbol. Uh, if I have slash users slash an ID, so users, are they're combined up until here because they're the same route to that point. Then I get the slash, I get my ID number, that gets me to state five, so that's also an accept state. Uh, and then if I have my optional format, that gets me to dot, whatever my format is, and that final accept state. So, again, we do not have just two routes generally. We have lots of routes. And there is actually a built-in visualizer in Rails. So you can call this in any app that you have written. So just go into the console, write uh, that file to whatever you want to name it, just .html. Uh, it's just Rails application routes router visualizer. And that will give you, so I have made one. I made, uh, I've got a cat's resources and a user's resource, and this is what you get. Pretty fancy, right? I don't think we see it. Oh, you cannot see that. Oh, <laughs> How do I get it over there? Which way is that? Oh, there we go. Remind me about your license for size up. So you can see, everybody starts from state zero. And our simplest route is just a slash, right? So cool, that's an accept state. Then you've got your built-in Rails routes down here, this giant tree. I've got all my users routes here. And then I made a cats resource, so I've got all my cats resources up here. Not only that, but this is actually interactive too. So say I want to see slash cats 22. It actually shows me which routes I hit. And if I give it something that's not valid, then you can see where it broke. So that is basically, at a very high level, how Journey works. So a quick recap, if I can figure out how to get back to my original screen. There we go. Journey uses its own regular expression engine to match routes. The steps are it first tokenizes the route and then parses the route using the rack rules. Um, that makes the trees, mash them together into a generalized transition graph, make a finite automaton that walks the graph to figure out if you've made it to a valid URL or not. And if it ends up in an accept state, you have a match, and then your router can continue doing what it does. I hope you have enjoyed this journey into journey in honor of last meetup, hashtag dad jokes. <laughs> if you would like to learn any more about this stuff, uh, Ruby Under a Microscope um, is a, a really fun book. It goes a lot into the detail of how Ruby actually works. The first two chapters are all about uh, parsers and compilers and things. Um, so a lot of this came from that. There is a YouTube video, um, similar subject. He covers some things in less detail, some things in a lot more detail. Um, but that's also a good one if you want to kind of look into it more. And then obviously the Rails repository because Journey is just a module in there now. So would recommend looking through that as well. Any questions? Yeah. I will say if this is way over people's heads and they're not as far into Rails as it makes sense or Ruby, uh, the guy on Ruby on Rails that for is a Rails routing from the outside in is excellent. We'll show you how to write stuff. 
Yeah, if you actually want to write stuff, this is not helpful at all. <laughs> so I do want to make that clear. This is more like, how does it really work, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have any idea what they were doing before Is Your Love came along with the journey? You know, I don't know. I was kind of pressed on time getting ready for this. I do want to look into that and see like what the solution actually was before that. So I do know going to the solution made a pretty significant or like performance boost, but I'm not sure what it actually was prior to that. And then I feel like you create this. We almost got there. Um, what do we do to actually get into the controller method? Uh, good question. Don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair. Yeah. Yeah, right. Do you think there's an easier way to do this? To do what? To do the router, to write the router. I don't know. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I barely know how this works at this point, so, yeah. I feel like, um, and, uh, I spoke too quickly. Uh, the point is, parsers are a thing, right? Like, switch and parsers are a thing, they've been around for a really long time, so if you came up with something that was easier, then actually, you'd probably be doing some ground very quickly stuff. Yeah, I mean, I will say from a computational standpoint, like, um, you know, preloading all the routes and making a giant state table off that doesn't mean you can parse routes really quickly. I mean, that's just like the main thing computers do, right? So, other question? So, so if you really have to figure out the like, not the data or anything, but if you thought, like, how does any, any piece of computer's vocabulary? Like, because obviously the computer knows, like, these are valid words that I know, and like, these are valid words that I don't. Or maybe the computer doesn't know what, what, word, what words are. Yeah, so there, uh, if I'm understanding your question correctly. Um, like, what, what, if, what if I said, like, get the, get the food wrapper, or, like, I'm using the key app, and I say it's a beer router. Mm -hmm. And the computer is like, oh yeah, I'll just go to the beer router. And it's like, oh wait, there's no beer. Well, this is a little bit lower level than that. This is like, how do you actually split that into words and then make meaningful things out of it? So you'd have to define first what, uh, like how to split up the words, and then use your grammar rules to tell, so you could basically instruct a parser these words go together, and when they go together, they mean this, and so then that eventually gets compiled into actual instructions. So like in, in Ruby, at that point, once you parse, it goes, it gets compiled into YARV instructions, which, but yeah, that's a whole different thing, so. <laughs> Uh, that's my understanding, yeah. So does it save those routes as like an object, or does it like write it to a really write the rules to a file somewhere? Do you know how that like works? Yeah. Okay.